Hey kids, today we're going to learn how to write eighth notes with a little review on how to write quarter notes. You gotta love it. Okay, come on camera, get in focus. Okay, so first what you do is you divide your lines in half and then you divide the halves in half and you put a line at the end of each line and a treble clef very stylistically designed as I do like so. Uh, if you can't remember how to make your treble clefs, go back to my first lesson on this. Okay, so now I'm going to make the notes that we made in the in the scale of quarter notes. And so I'm going to put my little 4-4 four, four time in here because you need to put a time signature at the beginning and a key signature um, on every line. We're just going to do this in the key of C because we're just doing one note. Because one note opuses are the best with rhythm exercises. Okay, just a second while I turn up the light a little bit so maybe you'll be able to see this better. Maybe I'll be able to do that. He tried. Oh. How about that? Okay, that's a little better. So, okay, so you can have a whole note, which is four beats, or you can have a half note, two half notes, which are two beats each. This is one, two, three, four, and this is one, two, and this is three, four. If you want to have two beats per measure, you may also have a dotted half note followed by a quarter note. Now notice I'm putting the note heads first and then stemming them. That's because you know when the note begins before knowing where it ends. So it's a good habit to get into so you can do your note writing in real time. Okay, so then, let's see if I can bring this a little closer. Ooh la la, yes. Okay, still focus, focus. Okay, so you can also have uh, a quarter note followed by a dotted half note. And those are all your options for having either one um, or two notes per per measure. So this is one, two, three, and then that's the fourth beat, and this is the first beat, and this is beats two, three, and four. Okay, so if we've gone through one and two notes per measure, we can also have three notes per measure. So you could have a half note followed by two quarter notes. Now notice that at first I put those note heads in and then I'm filling them in like so, so that the notes are approximately spaced as we did the lines of the measures so that you can visually scan and see where they are according to the measure. Okay, groovy. So this is beat one, that's beat two, there's beat three, and beat four. You can also have two quarter notes followed by a half note. Aha, uh -huh. one, two, that's three, and there's beat four. Finally, you can have you can get really jiggy with it, and this is where you want to take some care because you have to imagine where beat three is and then write beat four over here. Because this one goes one, two, empty beat on beat three, and then beat four. Okay. Finally, you can have a, a note on every beat of the measure. Not that interesting, but useful from time to time. And that just looks like that. One, two, three, four. So hey, I'm just going to clap out this rhythm for you, which is not that exciting, but I'll count at the same time. So it goes one, two, three, four. 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 One, two, three. One, two, four. One, two, three, four. This is not a rhythm. It is just letting, this is just the, the notes we'll start with or the rhythms we'll start with to write quarter note exercises. And then you just take these as rhythmic words and write your own measures. This lesson is assuming you have already done this because now what I want to show you is how eighth notes look the same or are similar in appearance. So now I've got another treble clef and now I've got another treble clef. And I'm going to divide my lines in half, and in half, and in half, and like so, and like so. And now, instead of doing 4-4 four, four or common time, I'm going to do 2-4, which means I'm going to have two beats per measure, and we're going to use eighth notes to get 
four notes up to four notes per measure so that we can see the similarity in the appearance of a group of four eighth notes versus a group of four quarter notes. Um, this is really, really helpful in making music that is easy for uh, your bandmates or your, you know, choir mates or whomever to read. Um, so, if you're going to have one note in a measure of 2-4, it'll be a half note because that's two beats long. So you just have one little half note and you put it there in the beginning of the measure. If you're going to have two beats, two notes per measure, you're going to have two quarter notes. Right on the beat. One and two. Okay. And then if you're going to have, ooh, something on the first quarter of the measure and then something on the last quarter of the measure, it will have a similar appearance. You'll have a quarter note, which is dotted, followed by an eighth note on the fourth subdivision. So notice I found, you know, sort of halfway through the measure and then put that on the fourth quarter because this is going to go one and two and then that's on, we say, the and of two. I'll put the ands in here as well. Okay. Finally, well, not finally, but for the top line, for two notes per measure, you can have an eighth note followed by a dotted quarter. And you can notice I'm kind of using the measure above it to give me a guideline. And I wrote my four rather sloppily, so I'm going to rewrite it. Like so. Okay. Moving on. Oh my gosh, I'd like to have more notes for measure, please. Sure. So up here I did a long note, a half note followed by two quarter notes. So here I'm going to do a quarter note followed by two eighth notes. And I'm going to stem these up because you can do the little flag stem on each of them. And this is good because then you can see that when the stem goes up, the flag goes that direction. And when the stem goes down, it goes the other. Uh, what does it do? Now it goes the same direction. Windward. Okay, but you can also do what we call beaming them together. Like that. Um, and that helps your eye group them together as one beat because this is one and that's the end of one and that's beat two and that's the end of two. Okay, likewise we can do the same thing. We can do one and two. So it resembles this measure, the fifth measure, up, or sixth measure rather, up here where we had one, two, three. So these I'm just going to go ahead and beam together because I like that and it's easier. Please excuse the stylization of my... Mm, it's not too bad, but this note head could really be better over the, over the, over the stem rather. Okay, penmanship is not my strong suit. Okay, so this is one and two. Finally, we get our beautifully syncopated measure where we're going to have three note heads just like we had them before. Run on the first quarter, second quarter, and fourth quarter, and some, nothing there on the third quarter, and so we're going to fill them in, and then it's going to look like this. You're going to have an eighth note, followed by a quarter note, followed by an eighth note, like so. And that is one and two is not articulated, and then there's the and of two. So, finally, you can have all the eighth notes you would like. I would, not, I would not flag these individually. I would either beam them thusly, so in pairs, because then it's easier to perceive the groups. This is one and two and, or you may, if you like, beam them all together like that, because then you can see the group of four. And I'm going to do something that's, it's good to think about. Let's see, did I do it with any of my in my, with any of my beams? No, I didn't. So let's do it because because now we don't have notes going up and down. But generally, what you do is you make the beams travel in the direction that the music is traveling. So assuming these notes are going from higher to lower, you're making the beam descend, and then it's easier to perceive the beam um, when it's written over the staff like that. And when I'm beaming a bunch of these together, notes together like that, like four notes, I'll do exactly what I did there, which is I wrote the first stem and the last stem and beam those together and then connect it like that. And then I'm just going to make these beams. It's a good thing I used an eraser. Highly recommended technique. Technique of the pros. Um, 
I definitely recommend learning this writing rhythm technique and then transitioning it to software, which is obviously a superior tool for many, many things, but it really helps you get your conception of how the notation works and how to work with it down. And then what you're going to do with it is you're going to write some rhythms. So you're going to take these rhythms. Oh, let me just clap these out. For you. So, bum, 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 bum. I'll count it with, with with clapping it. It'll go a little slower. One, two, one, two, one, two, and one and two. One, two, and one and two, one and two, and one and two and. Okay. Let me write these in two. Okay, and two and good. One and two and. So then what you do is you work on writing some, some, some of your very own rhythms. So what I do is if I want to write a little eight measure melody, and practicing this is good so that then you can write down your actual melodies. And we're only talking about rhythms so far. We haven't even talked about moving up and down. But so same thing. I'm going to divide the lines in half, then divide the halves in half. And I'll put a little double line at the end signaling fini. And then I'm going to put my little 2-4 here. I could also use the C, uh, the C with a line through it, which means cut time, to signal that we're going to do two beats in a measure. And then I'm going to think of a rhythm, like I'm going to go... Dum, da, da, dum, da, 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 dum. So... I went like this. Dum, two, and one, and... One and two and oh, I'm gonna redo those beams again. I gotta practice what I preach. Apparently, I need to practice. One and two and this looks terrible. Usually, I'm just doing this for me, people. Okay. Like that. So this was bump, 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 groovy. That sounds like a pretty decent start. And then we'll go bump, 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 bump. So I'm gonna do eighth note, quarter note, eighth. That's what I did, right? You can let me know in the comments if I changed it. Put a little longer stem down there and beam those together. And then attach that like that. Voila. And then finally this. Again, I can use those to look at exactly how far apart my note head should be down here. Make sure I've got my dot on there. And bam! I've got a nice eight bar phrase. One, two, one, two, bum, 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 bum. Okay, not gonna change the world, but now you know how to write rhythms. Okay. In this case, you don't even have to be on in tune, but if you're on time, you'll be okay.